Did everybody sign in? Yeah. Everybody got to sign in? Okay. So today is session three, which is probability. We are going to start with some probability basics. Then we are going to run pretty quickly through the binomial and geometric distributions. And then we're going to finish up with random variables. Now, when Ms. Moda had this session on Tuesday, she mentioned to me that they completely ran out of time um, and that this part had to spill over and there wasn't much time for multiple choice practice. If that happens, it happens, okay? Um, but I do, bless you, want to try to have some time for practice at the end, okay? So we'll, we'll just see where things go. Um, so the first thing I have on here is basic probability. This is the thing that I feel like a lot of people have questions on. How do I use those probability rules? What's the you know, intersection rule and what's the conditional probability rule and the addition rule and the multiplication rule and all that stuff? That is not the part of probability that you need for the AP exam. I'm not saying that you don't need that at all, but I am saying that they're not gonna ask you, what's the probability in a deck of cards that you draw this card and then this card and then this card, okay? They're not likely, let's put it that way, to ask you that type of question. That is not AP probability, yes? So I'm gonna kind of try to review the parts that are more likely to come up on the AP exam. They're gonna ask you to apply those kinds of things based off of a table of data or something like that. So that's what we're gonna spend some time practicing, okay? Um, so we are going to review the basic probability stuff a little bit in class when we get to that. But today we're going to focus on two-way tables, Venn diagrams, and tree diagrams. Because that's what I think is more valuable in terms of being prepared for the AP exam. Peach? <coughs> Thank you. So here is a two-way table. And we have individuals that are classified according to whether they identify as male or female and which age group they fall into. Yes? Okay, my first question is based on this table, if I randomly select one individual from the sample or population that is represented in this table, what is the probability that that individual is a male? So take a second and look at the table. I'll call on you, JL. Um, but what is the probability that that individual randomly selected from this table is male? Yes, sir? I want to say 210 over 517. Good. Are we okay with that? 210 over 517, the total number of males over the total number of people represented in this table. Would it help you guys if I turn this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Next question. What is the probability that the individual I select falls into the 15 to 17 age group? <laughs> Next hand I see. Yes, Michelle. Um, yes. The total number of 15 to 17 year olds over the total number of individuals represented in this table. Questions on either of these two? Neither of these are a conditional probability, meaning out of something other than the total. So they are both out of 517. Yes? Okay. Next question. What is the probability of choosing a male? What do we read this as? Given. 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 Good. Given that individual is 15 to 17 years old. So I'm going to say it again. What is the probability of choosing a male given that the person we chose is 15 to 17? Grace. 61 over 150. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, 61 over 150, yes. So Grace, do you want to describe how you did that? Yeah. Um, but, so they're saying that the probability of a male is given. So we go to the given part first. So it's 15 to 17, and yeah. And then you find how many males there are over the total. Good. So 
I like to think of given as reducing what's in my hat. Okay, we're talking about the probability of drawing somebody out of a hat and they're a uh, male, um, given that the only people in the hat are the 15 to 17 year olds. So I guess you don't really need the hat to think about this, but I, I like the hat. So my hat is reduced to the people on this row. If I'm only on that row, the probability of choosing a male is 61 out of 150. Cool. Okay. What is the probability of choosing a 15 to 17 year old given that the person I choose is male? Is that the same thing? No, it is not. Michelle? Uh, 61 over 210. Good. So Michelle, how does what you did change from what Grace did? Did you take the male total? Yeah. It's the order. It's the order, exactly. So she said, given it's male means the only things in my hat are, are the males. And then of those, what's the probability I choose 15 to 17 year old? So here I'm focusing on this column rather than on the specific row. Yes? Good? Good, good, good. Okay. What is the probability that the individual I choose is male and 15 to 17 years old. I'm seeing a lot of people like do this. Uh, Cedric. 61 over 572. Say it again? 61 over 572. Yes. Why is it out of 517? Damn. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, can we expand on that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Michelle. Because you have to consider the totals for the male and the age group, so you have to take both. Okay, yeah, it's not conditioned, right? Everybody's in my head. It's probability a male and 15 to 17 years old, old, period. Not out of males or out of anything like that. It's out of everybody. Yes, everybody stays in my hat here. There's no given. Yeah? Um, there's something I didn't put on here, but I want to. What is the probability that someone is male? Yeah. Or, or. How about or? <laughs> 15 to 17. <laughs> I thought you guys could guess. I thought you could leave right now. <laughs> it was wrong. <laughs> Dominic, what are you doing? What are you doing right there? <laughs> okay. I don't necessarily want to draw a Venn diagram. I think we could. I think that that could do it, but I don't really want to. Mark. Is it 360 over 517. I don't know. Where did 360 come from? Oh, uh, 150 plus 210. Sure. Well, uh, oh, yeah. minus, 61. minus 61. Yeah, because we double counted oh, okay. the people in the intersection. But exactly. So I'm going to take all the males and all the 15 to 17 year olds. So all of these people, <laughs> yes, which um, Mark took a shortcut and added, I don't know why, I, I shouldn't have circled that. We're not going to add the 210 to it. but all the males, all the 15 to 17 year olds, but then Michaela said, hang on a second, we double counted those 61 people that fall in the intersection, the 61 and people, right? <laughs> okay, um, and so what would we get? 299. Yep. What? 299. What is with your voice? <laughs> <laughs> 299, and what's it out of? <laughs> 517. 517, because it's out of everybody. There's no condition. Yes? Did I lose anybody? Questions? We can do this. We can do ands, we can do ors, we can do givens. That's all the probabilities. Okay? Oh. Are these two events, is male, is 15 to 17 years old, independent of each other? Well, we need to do some math. Okay? Um, if this is asked on the AP exam, they do not want you to say, yeah, they're independent because whether or not you're male or female has nothing to do with what age you are, so they're No, no, no. Answer this with math, okay? We have two ways, two formulas to check for independence. 
1 is probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. The other is probability of A and B. Anybody remember? Probability of A times the probability of B. <coughs> if these give me a true statement, if this is equal to this, or if this is equal to this, then the events A and B are independent. Okay? So let's see. Um, I don't have any space. Let's do A given B. Um, so let's do male given 15 to 17. From the other slide, what was the probability of male given 15 to 17? We just did it. 61. 61 out of 150 given 15 to 17 means only consider that row. Does that equal the probability of A where A is male? What was the probability of male? 210 over 517. Anybody got a calculator handy? I do. I don't think they're equal because I just made numbers up. <laughs> they're not equal? So are they independent? No, they are not. They're okay? Yeah. They're close? Yeah. They're real close? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, on the AP exam, they'll either be equal or they won't. Um, do you want to talk about how to do this one? Yeah. A and B, probability of A, probability of B. Okay. So the probability of A and B, male and 15 to 17, what was that? it's on this slide. 61 over everybody over 517. Does that equal, um, what was the probability of male? Not 61. 210 over 517 times 150 over 517. So is the probability of male and 15 to 17 equal to the probability of male overall times the probability of 15 to 17 overall? And if the first one wasn't equal, then these aren't going to be equal. But I'm guessing they're going to be close. Um, Jessica? If they're not, I mean, if they're, yeah, if they're not independent, are they just joint? Not necessarily. They could be neither. Okay. Good question. Are the events... So, so Jessica said, if they're not independent, does that mean they're disjoint? Follow-up question, are the events is male and is 15 to 17 years old disjoint? They're not disjoint. What does disjoint mean? Good. Disjoint means this, two separate Venn diagrams. And is should there be overlap between, good Cedric, should there be overlap <laughs> between male and 15 to 17? Should there be overlap? There should be overlap because of those 61 people. These 61 people go in the overlap. So they are not disjoint. They are neither disjoint nor independent. Good? Thank you for bringing that up, Jessica. Any questions? Is that a question, Ray, or is that a pen troll? Okay. Moving on. Uh-oh. Oh, go ahead. Oh. What does 307 over 517 represent? Let's work backwards. Don't shout it out. Think. Give people time to process. Cogitate. That means think. It does. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, Michaela. Um, it's the percent probability of female. Yeah. See that? Yep. 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 Oh, true. Okay. True. <laughs> okay. What is 22 over 307 
represent. I'll give you time to find those two numbers. 22 is here and 307 is there just to, to help you out. It doesn't give the answer. It just keeps no. you from having to search through the table. Said, I Jail, I've been ignoring you for a while. Let's call you, honey. <laughs> okay, is it probability female given 35 or older? Or the other way around. around because it's out of the females so the females is what's given yes so this is 35 and up given female Jess? yes good <laughs> now I think we're moving on for real okay a survey was conducted to see whether people prefer Coke or Pepsi. Fifth, no, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> Pepsi puts dinner on my table. I actually like because my job does not put dinner on my table. Okay. Fifty-five percent of people surveyed like Coke. And 60% of people serving like Pepsi. I rigged it. <laughs> are we going to be able to answer questions about this? No. What are we missing? Accurate representation of the results. Oh, stop it. <laughs> okay, I know it's silly, but Michaela? Thank you, the people who like both. Clearly there are people who like both. Why is it clear that there are people that like both? Jail? It's over 100%. We've accounted for more than everybody. So there is some Venn diagram overlap. And I gave it away. This is going to be a Venn diagram problem. Yes? Yes? Okay. Do we know that anyway? Make me feel better and say that we knew it anyway. Okay. 35% of people liked both. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> How can, uh, how can we organize this information? <laughs> Tail. I think I'm a Venn diagram. I think I'm a Venn diagram too. Good. Okay. <laughs> nothing can be worse than the previous video that's on YouTube. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and start our Venn diagram. Coke. Pepsi. Is it too small? I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Where should we start? In the middle. In the middle. And what goes in the middle? 35%. Is it okay if I write this as a decimal? Yes. Okay. Can somebody, everybody be quiet, and somebody raise their hand and tell me what they would do next. Matt. If you were to go like Pepsi, then you would have to subtract the people who like Pepsi and the third. Subtract 35 from the people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, okay, so Pepsi is 60%, but I've already got these 35% in the middle, so that means 21% out here? Yep. Okay, yeah. good. Yes? Yeah. And same thing over here? Okay, so 55% of people like Coke, so how many go in here? 0.2. 0.2. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what percent of people like only Pepsi? Leon. Yeah. Once you once you fill out the Venn diagram, the answers come pretty easily. Now, would it have been easy, as easy to answer that question without drawing the diagram and just being able to glean that from the information given? Not as much, okay? So 25% of people like only Pepsi. What percent of people don't like either of these? Can someone raise their hand and tell me how we would find that, Michelle? You would add all of the Okay, yeah, so let's see. We've got 60%, 70 80% accounted for. So I like to kind of draw a box around this, and we'll put those people outside of the circles. Yes, so 20%. Questions? Okay. Um, Uh-oh, I need this Venn diagram to be on the next slide. Burn it in your brain so you can help me copy it onto the next slide. Got it? Okay. 
I trust you. Okay, it was a big box. Point two is on the outside. It's a race against time. Point two. No. Point two. No. Point two. Point two. He's not right. Y'all were trying to mess with me. I was trying to help. I know you were. Okay, good. First question. Given that a person likes Coke, what is the probability that they like Pepsi too? Ooh. <laughs> so given that a person likes Coke, what is the probability that they also like Pepsi? Stephanie, what do you think? Very good. Very good. So given that they like Coke, I don't have like a row or a column to circle, but I can circle a circle. <laughs> given that they like Coke, that means I'm on this circle. What's the probability they also like Pepsi? So it's all the people in this circle who like Pepsi, 0.35, out of all of the people in this circle, 0.55. Good. Given that a person doesn't like Coke, uh, <laughs> given that a person doesn't like Coke, what is the probability that they like Pepsi? Michaela? Um, 0.25 over 0.45. I think that's right. 0.25 over 0.45. We agree. Given that they don't like Coke, means that they're here, yes? And of the people here, and the people here are 0 .45, 0 0.25 of them do like Pepsi. Yes? Does probability not seem so hard this time around? Good. Okay. Okay. Next. Sorry, morbid. Of the people of who died in the United States <laughs> in a recent year. Why can't it be born? I, well, because I'm talking about diabetes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I know we're laughing because we're uncomfortable. <laughs> Of the people who died in the United States in a recent year, 86% were white, 12% were black, and 2 percent were Asian. What? Why are there so many Because have you been to the like Northwest? Okay. Midwest, I think I'm going to be Okay. Siri, please. We're going to run out of time anyway. Thank you. Of people who died in the United States in a recent year, 86% were white, 12% were black, and 2% were Asian. This ignores a small number of deaths among other races. Sorry. <laughs> Diabetes caused 2.8% of deaths among white Americans, 4.4% among black Americans, and 3.5% among Asian Americans. The probability that a randomly chosen death was due to diabetes is about what? Oh my goodness, that's a lot of information. How can we organize said information? Sure. Jessica, what would you like to use? Um, the three one. The, okay, so. Triagrams. <laughs> Triagrams. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, I'm trying to think if there is a way to make that work. The problem, the problem is, the reason a Venn diagram was so appropriate for the previous one is because we had separate categories and then we had overlap between the categories. And that's what a Venn diagram does, is it allows us to sort of take care of that overlap and, and organize our information that way. Um, Michelle, what do you think? The tree diagram. Yeah, this one is a tree diagram question because I have one variable that I'm splitting my population up based on, and then given each of those, I've got another split. Yes? So I think if you tried to do a Venn, a Venn diagram, you'd start and then you'd get confused real fast because you don't know what numbers go where. So then back to the drawing board, let's try a tree diagram. Um, 
So, should my first split be based on race or should it be based on diabetes? Race. Why race? Because it came first in the problem? That's what we're splitting into two. <laughs> okay, so the Tukensky said the races add up to 100%, and we know that any branch split, the branches need to add up to 100%. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Good. Um, what else? Why else would we do race first? Uh, Michaela? Because the diabetes kind of depends on what race you are. Yeah, the diabetes data depends on what race I am, which means it depends on which branch I'm on. Yeah? Is that cool? Okay. So we have like death. Okay. And then we have the three races that are listed white, black, and Asian. And those are 86%, uh, 12%, and 2%. Okay with that? Then what? Okay. Please pardon the interruption with the following student. Please report to the front desk of the school. Agostina Portavales. Agostina Portavales. Please report to the front of the school. Thank you. My Lynn just said diabetes, no diabetes, diabetes, no diabetes, diabetes, no diabetes. Yes? yes. So, can I just write D and ND? <laughs> Uh -oh. Okay, and so 2.8% here, 0.028. We could figure out what goes there, but I don't think it's re relevant to the problem, so I'm just not going to do it. Is that okay? But we would just find the complement. 4.4% um, and 3.5%. Oops, that goes there. Now the question is, the probability that a randomly chosen death was due to diabetes. I have to decide if one branch is going to answer my question or if it's going to take multiple branches. What do we think for this one? Multiple branches, okay? I just wanted the probability that a death was due to diabetes, which means any of the branches that ended in diabetes, which are this one, or this one, and this one. Now can someone describe to me mathematically what I do to actually use this diagram to get an answer? <coughs> Michelle? You multiply like across each of those and then you add them also. Good. She said you multiply to get to the end of a branch and then if there are multiple branches you add the results. So without actually doing it we would do this times this plus this times this plus this times this. Cool? Any? Yes, Michelle. Um, I kind of forgot how you get the not diabetes percentage. Oh, well, if this is 2.8%, then not diabetes would be 97.2%. Oh. One minus. Okay. I hope I did that right. This is all being captured on film. It's making my arithmetic bad. Yeah, Kelsey. Can you repeat how you do that? Sure, sure. So I take 0.86 times 0.028. And then separately, I take 0.12 times 0.044. Separately, I take 0.02 times 0.035. And then I add those three products together. Mm -hmm. um, other questions with the tree diagram? So Venn diagram is helpful if you have, Venn diagram is helpful if you have Overlap. This many people are this, this many people are this, this many people are both, this many people are all three. That's a Venn diagram question. A tree diagram question is I have this way of splitting up the population, and then depending on which of those I am, I have this way of splitting up the population. Yeah? Okay. What is next? Um, okay, I'm moving on from the basic probability to talk about binomial and geometric. But are there any lingering questions before we change chapters? Cool. Okay. Binomial geometric. This is going to come back, I promise, but it's going to seem really rusty at first, I think. Um, binomial geometric distributions each had four conditions. 
I think once we get a couple of them, this will start to flow. But what are some of the conditions of the binomial distribution? Mylin, what's one of them? Um, does it have to be like success and failure? Good. So one is that each possible outcome, um, I only have two possible outcomes, success or failure. Good. Cedric? Fixed probability. Fixed probability of success on any given outcome. Good. Michaela? <coughs> we have to have independence. I don't know what the fourth one is, Cedric. Number of trials. Yeah, fixed number of trials. Thank you. Okay. That's always hard when you get three, which one you're missing. So only two possible outcomes, success or failure. We have a fixed number of observations, and we call that N. We have a fixed probability of success on any one observation. We call that P. And observations are independent of each other. So an example of a binomial looking problem would be um, you roll a fair die 20 times, what's the probability you get exactly six ones? Okay, six number of trials, I already forgot how many times you roll the die, but that many. Okay, thanks, 20. Fixed probability of success, that would be one sixth. Independence, each dice roll is independent of each other. Success or failure, success would be rolling a one, thank you. Failure would be anything else. <coughs> yes? Okay. What about geometric? What are the four conditions of a geometric scenario, right? Yeah, you took the easy one. Independence, uh, Leandra. Success or failure, Cedric? Dang! Yes, <laughs> that's the hard one. <laughs> the variable of interest is the number of trials until I have my first success. Very good. And what are we missing? Set probability. So we don't have a fixed number of trials this time. What we're interested in is how many trials it takes to be successful. So same scenario as before, what's the probability that I roll my first one on my fifth roll of the die? That would be geometric, yes? So success or failure, fixed probability, independence, variable of interest is the number of trials required to get to the first success. Cool. cool. We will do some examples. I will remind you of some other things and then we'll do some examples. <laughs> okay. Oh, too soon. I'm just going to take a little water break then. You're not very distribution function, CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. What was the difference, practically speaking? Diana? P is with the equals, mm -hmm. and then CDF is with the less than. Yes, so PDF is if I wanted the probability of one particular outcome, I wanted the probability of getting exactly five ones or something like that. CDF is cumulative, it's the probability of up to that value, less than or equal to. So PDF is equal to, CDF is less than or equal to. Okay? Um, the binomial formula, there it is. It's in the reference sheet. Remember, we have to be able to use the formula. The calculator does the actual number crunching for us, but we have to convince the grader that we know how to use this formula. It's silly. And mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution are also on the reference sheet. All of this is on the reference sheet. Doesn't tell you what PDF and CDF mean, but the other stuff is. For geometric, we do not use 
the geomet whatever in the calculator because it's messy and um, I deal with it. We don't do it. We do these by hand. They're not difficult. They are very logical. Um, here is the geometric formula. This is not in the reference sheet. Here are the mean and standard deviation of the geometric distribution. They are not in the reference sheet. So these, you don't have to memorize these. You kind of do. I think it's probably outside of the I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can I make you wait too long? Okay, so when you punch it into the calculator, what are the three numbers? We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get to it. And if you have your calculator with you, I'd get it out because I, I will go through these. We'll solve some. I wouldn't like storm up and borrow a calculator, but hopefully you're sitting next to someone who has theirs. Uh oh. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Can I move on from this slide? Okay. So, we know that blood type is determined by a person's genetic makeup. If both parents carry genes for both O and A blood types, then a child has a 25% chance of getting both O genes and expressing type O blood. So there's a 25% chance that a child of these two parents would have type O blood. Different children of the same parents inherit genes independently of each other. If such a couple has five children, what is the probability that exactly one of them has type O blood? First of all, binomial or geometric? Binomial, why? Study? Um, the exactly is going to come into play later, but yeah, Ray said they gave us N. What's N? Five kids. We're not having kids until something happens. We are having five kids, and I don't know who we is, but <laughs> five kids. So this is binomial with N equal to five, and what's the probability of success? 0.25. We'll call success type O blood, failure not type O blood. Okay? So far so good? Okay. I want the probability that exactly one of them has type O blood. So I say probability that X is equal to one, meaning I have exactly one success. Yes? Okay. So now I do the tall skinny parentheses. And this stands for five choose one. This is the number of ways of arranging one type O blood kid out of five kids. Yes? And then I take the probability of success. And what do I raise it to? One, the number of successes. Yes? Is this kind of coming back? Yeah. Okay, thank goodness. And then I take... 0.75 and I raise it to 4. four. Good. So this is n and then the number that I want. Okay, 5 choose 1. Probability of success raised to the number of successes. Probability of failure raised to the number of failures. Because those four kids who don't have type A O blood are failures. Um, <laughs> greater is happy? Yes? Now let's talk about what we actually do. Binome. The fact that I only want x equal to 1 means PDF. Whoa. And I'm out of room. Um, what follows is NPK. Number of trials, 5. Probability of success, 0.25. And what's K? 1. It's what I want to actually find the probability of. I know that's really misaligned and far off. So I do binome PDF 5 comma 0.25 comma 1. Do we remember where binome PDF is? No. Second bars. Yeah. Second bars. Got it? No? 
<laughs> Where's Mars? You got it? Okay. Help help your neighbor. Be kind. And I don't actually care what the answer is right now, but are we okay? Well, what is the answer, just for the sake of the people watching the video? 0.396? 0.396. 0 0.396, people watching the video? Okay. If such a couple has five children, what is the probability that at most two of them will have type O blood? At most two of them. After this example, I think we'll take a short break and then we'll come back, okay? Um, at most two. What inequality means at most? Leon? <laughs> yeah, less than or equal to. At most means two is the most, which means less than or equal to, yes? Now remember to make the greater happy, we, we dot, 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 yes? So x less than or equal to two means x is going from what to what? Good, I remember that we could start with zero. Okay, we can start with zero. Zero type O blood kids, is that possible? Of course it is. Um, okay, so I'm going from zero to two. So I'm gonna do the zero term, five, what goes here? Zero, point 0.25 to the zero, point 0.75 to the five, thank you. Plus dot dot dot, Plus, now I do the two term. Can somebody raise their hand and give me the whole two term? Michaela? Um, five over two times 0.25 to, uh, like, two, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this point plus five. Beautiful. Good? Okay. Less than or equal to means CDF. Right? I like less than or equal to. So this is just going to be binome CDF 5 comma 0.25 comma 2. That means up to and including 2. Can I get an answer if anybody's doing the calculator? I think some of us are. Thank you. Okay. We're not done with binomial. We're going to do maybe one more example, but I think we need a break. So um, I'm leaving the camera on because it's easier to edit if it's continuous footage. So don't be inappropriate and don't knock the camera over. Five minutes and then be back. Thank you. All right, next question. It's, we're just picking up where we left off. I didn't stop at a stopping point. We're still on this blood type problem. If such a couple has five children, what is the probability that at least two of them will have type O blood? So the previous problem was at most two. This is at least two. Okay? So probability X, what means at least? Uh, greater, than greater than or equal to 2, okay? So that means x is going from what to what? From 2 all the way up to everybody, which is 5. Okay, I know we just did this, but can somebody do the 2 term for me, please? Toganski, you can do it. You got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Five and two. Uh-huh. Yep. Good. Thank you. Plus dot dot dot. Could somebody do the five term for us, please? What? Leon. Five choose five. And then point twenty-five. Oh, to the five, sorry. To the five. And then point seven five to the zero. Good. Go with that? Okay. Now, this one is not as easy to put in the calculator. It's fine showing the greater that we know what we're doing, but it's a little bit tricky because the calculator is CDF. It requires less than or equal to. So I need to rewrite probability x uh, greater than or equal to 2 in terms of a less than or equal to. Um, anybody remember generally how we do this? Benin? 1 minus 5. 
Yeah, so we're going to do 1 minus. We're going to use the complement rule. Greater than or equal to 2 means 2, 3, 4, 5. What's left? 1, 0, right? Okay, so the complement is x less than or equal to 1. Good. Yes? Okay, so in my calculator, I'm going to do 1 minus binome CDF 5.25. One. Is this all rushing back to you? Yeah. Okay. Point six three two. Thank you. Point six three three. I know. Wait. Good. Oh, point three seven. Oh, okay. That's what she meant. So. Point three six seven. Okay. Thank you. Which is a good point. It's easy to forget that one minus. Yeah. Let's not lose Thank you, ma'am. I agree. I just, sorry, I'm eavesdropping. But Grace just said put the one in beforehand so you don't forget it. Just literally type one minus binome CDF. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I do the same thing because I would forget the one minus. Okay. Uh, next. Same situation. What is the probability that their third child is the first one to have type O blood? What just changed? Leandra? Now we're geometric. I don't know how many kids they are having. I keep saying we, let's change it to they. I don't know how many kids they are having, but I want the probability that the third one is the first one to have type O blood. Okay. Geometric is easier than binomial. We didn't spend as much time on it in class because it's easier. Um, so I want my first success to happen on the third try. What does that mean about the first few kids? Michelle? Good. That's exactly it. The first couple kids are failures. <laughs> So I take the probability of failure, raised to the number of failures that I want to see. I want to see two failures, then I want to see a success. I don't have to worry about any coefficient thing out front because there's only one way to arrange this. Fail, fail, success. That's why we don't use the fancy calculator stuff for geometric, because it's so simple. It's just logic. If my first typo kid is the third one, that means I have two non-typo kids, and then one, I'm calling it typo. <laughs> typo, okay, good? Is that why you're laughing or no? I didn't think so. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. Um, good here? Good, okay. What is the probability that it takes them more than three children to have a type O? child. Um, so this is x greater than 3. I don't know when my first success happens. How many failures do I know for sure that I have, Michaela? I know for sure I have three failures. Do I know what happens after that? Done. That's it. Okay? Um, that's actually all I wanted to talk about with binomial geometric. We are going to review it a little bit more in class, so if you feel like you're like just getting on the brink of being comfortable with it again, it's coming back. It'll come back early next week, um, or maybe tomorrow if there's time. So we're going to be okay. Yeah? Anybody want to ask a question before we move on? We're actually almost done with the, the note stuff, and then we'll start multiple choice. Okay. All righty. Um, the last subtopic I wanted to talk about was random variables. This was chapter 7, um, so I went a little out of order because binomial and geometric was actually chapter 8. Um, a random variable. Random variables can either be continuous or discrete. An example of a continuous random variable is the normal distribution. Uh, discrete random variables, we put them in a table, right? certain outcomes, and then we put the probabilities associated with those outcomes in the second row. 
Um, given a situation, how can you tell if the variable is continuous or discrete? What's the difference between a continuous random variable and a discrete random variable? Michaela? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, not quite. Not quite. So a continuous random variable definitely would be quantitative, um, but a discrete random variable is, is also quantitative, although sometimes it helps to think of it as a categorical random variable. I mean a categorical variable, but for now let's say that they're both quantitative. I don't want to confuse the situation. Grace? Is a continuous like, some, like an actual number though, like its height or something? Okay. Whereas discrete? Okay, we're, we're dancing around it. Carly. Okay, so continuous random variable has infinitely many possible outcomes. All outcomes within usually a given, you know, range of values are possible, whereas a discrete random variable can only take on certain sort of set values. Doesn't mean they have to be whole numbers, but a lot of times it is. A lot of times a discrete random variable only takes on whole number values, but that's not necessarily the case. Michaela? So continuous would be like weight and then discrete um, it depend. It kind of depends on how you measure it. So I think a continuous random variable we could think of as height because you could be 62 inches, you could be 62.01 inches. You could be 62.00001 inches, right? The number of decimals I carry that out to just depends on how sophisticated my measuring equipment is. Whereas a discrete random variable, yeah, if I ask you how old you are and I really just want a whole number, like I don't record 23.5, well, none of you are 23.5, but I don't know why that was the number I went to. 17.5, uh, if I only recorded 17 or 18, then that would be discrete, yes. Um, something that has to be discrete would be like the number of siblings you have. Right? Okay. Whereas age, I could think of as a continuous random variable, right? Depending on how precisely I measure it, it is continuous. Um, however, number of siblings, no matter how I measure it, that's going to be a whole number. Yes? Um, what's another discrete random variable? How many dogs you have? How many cats you have, for that matter? Okay. Um, so anything that is the number of the number of flights that left Orlando on a given day, that's going to be a whole number. Okay. Again, discrete doesn't have to be whole number, um, but a lot of the time it it ends up being that way. Um, today we're going to primarily focus on discrete random variables because continuous random variables. Um, a big chunk of that is the normal distribution, which we don't even necessarily think random variables when we solve those problems. And then other stuff we're going to wait and focus on in class. So you decide to play a game involving a spinner. The spinner has 10 equally divided sections labeled 1 through 10. Can you picture it? Yeah. OK. If you spin an even number, you win a dollar. If you spin a 1, a 3, or a 5, you win $3. I lose three dollars. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to sound like a really good game. <laughs> um, if you spin a seven or a nine, you win five dollars. You follow? Okay. So you don't pay to play, but there is an outcome where you lose, and you do have to pay three dollars. Okay. <coughs> and then you still could lose money. That'd be a pretty pretty crappy game. Okay. So let's make a probability distribution table to model this situation. Now, the number one point of confusion with this type of thing is to try to put the actual like spinner outcomes as the x values. 1 through 10 are not the outcomes. I'll say that again. 1 through 10 are not the outcomes. What are the outcomes? These three things. A dollar, three dollars, a negative three dollars, and five dollars. Do you see that? The outcome is what actually happens. We use the one through ten kind of thing to figure out the probability of each of those outcomes. So one outcome, um, let's put them in order. Negative three, positive one, positive five. Five, five, six, seven, seven. Oh. Okay. Five with a little 
<laughs> okay, um, those are the possible outcomes. Do we see that? What is the probability of this outcome? Three out of ten? What is the probability of this outcome? We spin an even number. 0.5. And what is the probability of this outcome? 0.2. And what should be true of these? They add up to 1. Yes? Okay. Did I do something wrong? Um, so I lost three dollars if I spun a one, a three, or a five. But there are ten things on the spinner, so three out of ten. And then I spin, I get one if I spin an even number, which would be two, four, six, eight, ten. So five out of ten is that good? All right. Um, I have a question on the next slide. So burn this table in your brain. Got it? Okay. I don't trust you guys. <laughs> I know. Okay, I guess I can do it down here. There you go. No, you didn't. It was well. I guess we could figure it out since the information's up here. But it's negative one, negative three, one and five, and then point three, point five, and point two. The question is, what are the expected earnings on a single play of this game? Number one wrong answer. One dollar because it's the most likely one. That's wrong. That is not what expected means. There was a question like this on the AP exam last year and about half of kids did that. They just picked the most probable outcome and said, well, that's what I would expect to win. It's the most likely one. Expected has special meaning in statistics. What does it mean? Michelle? That you, I know that how to say like what you do to the math. Don't you multiply negative three by point three, one by point five, five by point two, and add them together? Yes. And what is it that we're finding by doing that? Mm -hmm. Danielle? The expected value, which is a fancy way of saying yeah. the average. It's a weighted average. It's if I did this out many many repetitions, that would be the average outcome. Okay. So Michelle is right. Um, Negative three times the probability of that outcome plus one times the probability of that outcome plus five times the probability of that outcome. <coughs> cool? Okay, and I'm hoping that isn't one because I just said that one is the wrong answer. Point, point, point one? Point nine. Oh, I heard two different numbers. I got point six. Oh. What are you doing? Michaela's having a, a weird calculator day. So, point six. Since this is positive, it tells me it's probably to my advantage to play this game. If I played over a long span of time, I should win an average of 60 cents per play. Um, questions? Okay. That's actually it. Um, so, for the next, I know we only have 20 minutes, I want you guys to spend some time working on these multiple choice questions. Could a couple people help me pass these out, please? I need a help, Cedric. I need oh. help, Such nice voice. Okay, one more special helper. Thank you, Benin. You got this other All right. So stay put. Don't leave. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, is the sign-in sheet right there? Could you make that in its way up here? Just like pass it. Thank you. Thank you. I think I can stop recording.